Welcome to the Equestrian Perspective Podcast. I'm Felicity Davies and I'm here to simplify horse training and teach you absolutely everything you need to know about how to build both your own and your horse's confidence levels, form an amazing relationship together and feel empowered in any environment. And on this podcast, I'll be sharing my best advice, trainings and mindset shifts so you can truly connect with your horse and pursue your goals in a way that feels good for both of you. So get ready to embark on a new equestrian perspective and I'll see you on the other side. Hello, before we dive into this episode, I just wanted to let you know that this is a part two episode. So the first episode, I am talking with Sophie Evans, who is a former Confident Equestrian Program student, and she's talking about her journey with horses, working in top eventing yards and working as a groom for many years and sort of the experiences that she had there. And then in this episode, we dive into the start of her horsemanship journey and the feelings that she had moving through, um, learning more about how to read horses and what was actually going on with her horse, and then navigating her kind of horsemanship awakening um, and all of the layers involved with that, including her time inside the Confident Equestrian Program through to where she is now with her horses and how she's feeling now. So if you want to hear more about her journey before diving into this episode with the horsemanship side of things, check out part one. However, if you're here just for the horsemanship awakening stuff, then you're going to love it. Sophie's awesome and super inspiring. So enjoy listening and have fun. Our first event was horrible cross country. She was just out, out of control in my eyes. Again, really, really slow, but just felt awful Mm -hmm. took her eventing again quite quickly and it was much much better because I just went look Sophie to hell with your nerves and feeling out of control you just have to trust this horse and that was fine Uh, and she was very good girl I think we actually got placed in that event Um, and at some point and I cannot figure out how or why it popped up on my radar but at some point I found Warwick Schiller and his podcast and started listening and Warwick is really really candid about he's how he's gone from doing one thing Mm -hmm. with quite a set mindset and had this transition to having no idea what he's doing Mm -hmm. with no real mindset to coming out the other side Mm -hmm. and this sowed a seed And now I found myself in this position where I'm my own boss. Mm. I've got my horses at home. So I have as much or as little time as I want to myself. Yeah. And I started Googling and YouTubing and getting on Instagram. And just once I picked this, you know, gab for a better word, I couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. thinking about every single time I go and tack up peaches she tries to bite me she -hmm. tries to kick me when I put a rug on her she's difficult to lead she was never dangerous but she was always on the edge of you know she could run me over if she wanted to but because I've worked on professional yards and I'm used to having giant horses walking way too close to me and treading on my heels it doesn't bother me I'm not scared of them on the ground at all And, you know, with my retired horses, I walk in there with their feed buckets. They're all over 16 hands. I've got big, warm blood boys, keen for their breakfast. Out the way. Go on. Out the way. Fine. Bucket on the floor. Done. You know, I'd never be windy or wary about horses. And I would put myself in a very, very knowledgeable position that I can read them very, very well. And so I know, like, actually, now I can ask them, tell them get through the gateway all now is not a good time because you're staring staring in the opposite direction and actually you're like shoulders touching me if I ask you to move you're probably just going to run straight over me yeah so I just knew instinctively how to manage peaches I accepted that she was a you know big bolshy alpha dominant but because she loved her job she could do what she wanted basically you know and if she bit me that's my fault for being in the way mm-hmm. you know she had all the ulcer investigations she was fed hay before she was ridden um they lived out overnight 
and that was something that I was really, really keen to stick to. All my horses were out as much as possible. She lived out in a little herd at this point. And I just thought, oh, God, I'm doing everything for you. Why can't you just be nice? Mm. And, of course, once I started going down this journey, her behavior got worse because I started seeing more and more. I started taking it personally. Mm. I get very frustrated with myself um, for not being able to stop her from behaving in these ways, not fighting me, for not pushing past me, for being stressy, you know, for whinnying at the wrong moment, you know, when she stood next to the lorry at an event. I also, when I went eventing, started seeing a lot of very, very unhappy horses and very, very stressed out owners, parents, riders, grooms, and started thinking, like, what, what does this do for me? And what does this do for my horse? And what does this do for the rest of my life? For so long, eventing had been, you know, and every weekend, why I get up so early, why I work so hard on yards, why I'm up every day with a big smile on my face, because I know I've got a show jumping lesson on Thursday, I'm going eventing on Saturday. If yeah. it's not with my horse, it's with one of the other horses on the yard. Mm-hmm. Um, and suddenly I had my own life. And it was all up to me. If I was going eventing, I had to put the effort in. I had to drive. I had to do everything. I wasn't surrounded by this team of very, very competitive amateurs and professional riders who, you know, they don't ask how you are, like how your parents are, what your dog's up to. They go, where are you eventing at the weekend? How did you do show jumping last weekend? How was your lesson? And suddenly I had this big space physically and mentally to be like, I've actually got more of a life than just going eventing every weekend and that being the be all and end all and peaches being you know what I wake up for and what I go to sleep for Mm. I have now other people's horses that I'm solely responsible for and absolutely love transitioning from you know ex-competition horses that are haven't been out of a stable overnight Mm. for 10 years to living out in a herd you know with no shoes on very minimal rugs um, and looking after the owners and walking them through that process and what their expectations are of like mm. how they have to deal with once having a very pampered stable horse to now having a horse in a field that you know he's got bite marks he's given horses bite marks he's got a long mane he's you know got a bit of a belly and I loved that process. And I just thought, God, there is so much more to life than me busting a gut going eventing mm-hmm. and not enjoying it. Mm-hmm. And Peach is not enjoying it. Yeah. Um, so we did a few events. And I just got to one event in August and did a dressage test and hated how it felt, hated how it made her feel hated the walk back to lorry park because she was so rushing to get back to the lorry her safe space and I just knew like everything I was doing was upsetting this horse and upsetting me and making me not very nice and making my horse not very nice and I did the dressage test and I just thought like right we're going home yeah I'm not doing it what is the point and I said to my partner and I said to Peaches you know we'll just go show jumping if you don't want to be on the bit that's fine we're really, really lucky here in England. Like, you know, I've got probably three or four really good show venues within an hour and could go show jumping. And I thought maybe I'll take her hunting for the winter and she can just chase some friends and I'll learn to be brave. Like, it, mm. I'll learn how to ride this horse, trust her, be better for her. Yeah. Um, yeah. And about a week later, I took her to a show jumping lesson with my regular trainer and she stopped going down a distance. And I thought... Oh, she's telling me. And at this point, I'd really started to connect with like how I was feeling about her. And I was really okay with not knowing why I was feeling these things. It was so uncomfortable. Mm. But I was like, I've got to listen to Peaches. So she stopped going down a distance twice. And it wasn't a dirty stop. It wasn't because I got her wrong. It was a real, like, there are four strides and I don't want to take off after the second. Like, I don't want to take you to the next fence after the second stride. Mm. I I was broken off a bit of tree to carry as a stick 
I said I didn't want to, but against my better judgment, I held it and she would jump, but I didn't use it. I got off her at the end and I thought, that's it. I'm going to give her a month off. I'm going to give me space to, you know, watch a thousand work Schiller videos and come out as like the professional <laughs> horseman that I know I am inside. Yeah. Um, and she was, Peaches was foul in the field. She was running around. She was really stressed and unhappy. Like just, mm. I couldn't, and I was so annoyed with her because I've got this amazing facility here and I'm trying to do my very best for her. And I was just like, she's so ungrateful. She's mm -hmm. so annoying because she won't just love me, love the life I've provided for her. Mm -hmm. And all along this, like, you know, I'm not riding. Like, I moved to this place to basically ride and look after other people's horses and just live this life I've always dreamed of. And now I'm, like, not riding. I can't ride. I don't know what to do with my very, very special, pretty expensive, um, very talented horse. Um, I had a lot of people from my old sort of yard competition I was asking me what's going on, why I'm not riding, trying to come up with excuses like, oh, Peaches is a bit sore, like, oh, I'm mm. just having a break because I'm going to hunt her this winter, you know, came up with all sorts of excuses uh, and excuses for myself. Yeah. Um, really beat myself up about how lazy I was being and my lack of motivation. And I just, I just didn't know what to do with myself. So this would have been September 2021. Mm. Um, and I thought, right, she'll have a month off and then that's it. You know, get her in. She won't have lost too much fitness. I know she likes to hunt. Um, so I'll just see what happens. And, you know, if I get run away with, I'm never going to be that far away from home and I'll just go back to the lorry and we'll rejig my plans for this horse. Mm. And when I went to start working with her, I couldn't unsee how against every single idea I had she was you know I try and put a head collar on her and she'd turn her head into the corner of the stable and she'd snarl and she'd get the anxious eyes and tight muzzle and grinchy tight nostrils and I just thought right no I guess uh I can force her I can grab her, I can pull her head around, I can put her in a head collar. Um, but I don't really want to do it that way. Mm. So I spent last winter on a sliding scale of forcing myself to do stuff with them. And the stuff that I was doing with my horse at this point was sitting in their stable and listening to a meditation, trying to read a book. But it was so forced. And it was only because this is what like, Warwick or other people who are on this relational horsemanship journey are on. And like I said at the beginning, I am all about consuming information. Yeah. And I don't necessarily like to go too deep. So I will grab that bit, grab that bit, read this bit, listen to that bit. Never fully take it on board. Mm. Never let it settle. Never let it be. But then every time I'd go and work with my horses, catch my horses, do anything with them, I'd be like, okay, well, you know, this trainer says this, this person says that, I need to ensure that this person who said that, that I could do this, and maybe there's one of this. And, you know, I listen to podcasts, watch workshops, watch webinars, watch masterclasses of all sorts of people. And for the next three days, I'd be like, that's how I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. And then I'd be like, oh, wait, but this person said this is a good thing but then that person said that that was a bad thing and I was stuck in the middle like I've I don't trust myself because I've made this mess you know I've done all these horrible things with my horse she hates me she hates her life I've ruined her mm. I need to fix this but I don't trust myself so I was trying to find somebody else to trust mm. and there was nobody in the UK that I found that I wanted to work with me in this particular way I was very very clear that I didn't want her to be taught tricks Mm. Um, I didn't want to do sort of the go down these systems that have got you know like step one we do this step two we do that I was like no because both of us need to change our minds about so many things and I just didn't know where to start yeah 
Um, so I came across Felicity's podcast, I think having listened to the Alexa Linton Whole Horse podcast. Yeah. Then started listening to Felicity's podcast about confident equestrian program and the equestrian perspective. And so all this sounds really interesting because a lot of this is to do with the rider's mindset, mm. not so much what the horse is, what, what tricks basically you teach yours. Because that's really what I thought natural horsemanship was. Yeah. You know, I really wasn't interested in trick training basically I was very English you know yes I appreciate my horse has got to bend laterally but like I really don't need to be able to like get their nose to touch their tail while I'm sat on them like lateral flexion is bad and I don't want to teach them to sit down I don't want to teach them to pour I don't want to teach them to smile so like clicker training really didn't sit with me because mm. I didn't want yeah this whole circus act I felt like that was possibly quite disrespectful to the horses. Mm. Um, Now I've come to realize that any behavior we teach them is a trick. Any trick we teach them is a behavior. It's just up to you what you teach them. Um, So, yeah, I messaged Felicity probably February time and said, you know, would confident equestrian program suit someone like me? Like I haven't sat on my horse. I don't really know what to do. Like help. Because at this point, I was absolutely desperate. Mm -hmm. And Felicity got straight back to me um, and said, yeah, probably would really work for you. Um, You know, I've got one starting in March. Sign up if you're interested. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I did. And I signed up for Felicity's mindset um, one-on-one, which was absolutely incredible. And... Even though I wasn't necessarily 100% sold on the course, what I was going to learn, I was like, you've got to do something. Mm. The fact that we were all in a group together and we had these once a week group Zoom calls where we could listen to what everyone else what everyone else had gone through and um, what everyone else had learned in the week and what our breakthroughs were, what our not so good days were was so reassuring and empowering to me because I suddenly went from being you know in my eyes surrounded by all these people that have got it so together with their horses and also you know they're so my friends and old bosses and old workmates in my eyes they were so blind to what their horses were going through yeah and I really really struggled with that Mm. um and when I'd tell people, you know, how I felt about the horses, they, you could see them like rolling their eyes and to suddenly be in an environment every week with the same people who were like, yeah, nah, your horse pulled an ugly face when you went to put your head collar on. Okay, yeah, I, I understand that you didn't catch her. Whereas everybody else in my life would have been like, you know, we'll catch her. Um, you know, even my parents, like, they don't understand. My mum said, you have to appreciate that, you know, just because Peaches isn't that happy, you know, you pay for everything for her. You give her a wonderful life. The least yeah. she can do for one hour a day mm-hmm. is what you want. Mm. And I was like, oh, that doesn't sit great with me anymore. Like, maybe it, it used to. Maybe I used to be able to accept that. But absolutely not now. Like, I don't mind. If she never... Yeah. gets ridden again if I can't do anything with her obviously medical stuff barrier stuff you know I've always been like there are stuff they have to get up get on with in life um but now I would try and do that in as nice a way as possible and not just be cross with them for not doing what I want them to do seven days a week even if it's just one hour out of their 23 totally. um how long had so, it been since you'd ridden peaches between when you like well how long had it because you only just had another seat on her like recently how long was that gap 296 days yeah so you had a, a, nearly a whole year without riding her and you were just I remember when so basically just to recap so I remember when you messaged me and I was just like, oh, I can so resonate with your story and like the feelings <laughs> that you're going through because I totally understand that like loss of identity, you sort of like found this new sort of way of being and you're diving into the rabbit hole and nothing seems to be working and you want everything to be happy and perfect and it's just 
it doesn't seem to be going that way. And yeah, you joined the group and you also added on the three additional mindset calls. And then you ended up, ended up adding on another three additional mindset calls just to kind of take it deeper so that we could have a bit more time each session, which was amazing. Um, but I just remember really, um, like I've got your, your feedback form here and like the, you, in regards to what was stopping you from achieving your goals on your own, which were to hack a happy peaches, restart Bluebell, who, who, the five-year-old, and be your best self for your horses and show up being exactly who they need you to be. And in regards to what was stopping you from achieving those goals on your own, you said, I'm worried I'm lazy, I'm confused, fear of fucking it up, fear of getting it all wrong and outsiders judging me um, and saying sort of like, I told you, you couldn't do it. So like that kind of like that bit there encapsulates like where you were at. And then in regards to why you were committed to making that change now, you were just like, I'm so ready to take my horsemanship knowledge to the next level. I'm fed up, not trusting my abilities and my intuition and wanting, you're wanting to change that this year. And I really felt like, like, obviously you've spent all of this time, like trying to do things yourself. You've got this epic property. You've got all of this pressure on yourself, like trying to make it all work and everything come together and it's just not seeming to come together. So yeah, you're really in this place of being like, I don't, where the, where the fuck do you, do you go from here? You know what I mean? <laughs> How do I get, my, and yeah, you were like, went from, as we heard earlier, like being so, so motivated, such a go-getter, like wanting to learn everything, wanting to do everything with the horses to like, you were in a stage where you were avoiding working with the horses as well, weren't you? Yeah, 100%. I, I really, I'd walk them to and from their field to the stable and back again. But I'd have to force myself to do anything with them. And then I'd hate myself for forcing myself. Like, yeah. why am I having to force myself to work with these horses? Yeah. You know, I feel so guilty. And I just, I know as well, like what, and it's something that I'm working with now still, but I'm much more comfortable with it. Mm. I expected everything to change in five minutes. Yeah. At least in 24 hours. Yeah. I wanted to take the pill, drink the special tea, you know, like read the one piece of information, mm. um, repeat the mantra three times, and then that's it. Like, bam, Sophie 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, whatever level I'm at now. Um, she's done yeah now I can work with my horses now I'm fixed now I'm I'm ready to go I'm, I'm fully motivated I'm mm. like I'm self-assured I'm confident I trust myself and wow you know my horses they're just there like little Disney princesses with their big eyes and their big noses and their big ears and they just love me and they do whatever I want them to do and then you know I mm. just wanted that to happen yeah and going through the confident equestrian program I wasn't so worried about what I could teach the horses yeah. because I know that I can get horses to do what I need to do. And I know that I can learn anything with them. Mm. And I knew that everything that Felicity would teach me would sit great and would be done in a way that I appreciated and I enjoyed, but I wasn't so worried about like, Oh, this is going to totally transform my horses because like I understood the, the process of groundwork I understood mm. why it's good to have your horses comfortable in certain situations and how to go about it now um it was more the accountability the group calls and just a feeling that I was in a environment of people that understood what I was going through and that like no problem was small enough mm -hmm. um and so I like devoured the videos. And then when I'd go and work with the horses, like maybe I do two or three times a week. Mm. And I wouldn't, at this point, I've made them an equicentral setup. So they never come in stables anymore. They live in a herd of seven. Mm. I'd work them in their sand pit communally. So I'd be trying to dodge like four horses while I'm working one of them. Um, and as well, like another thing that I slightly struggled with is at this point, I have three horses. I've got a lovely four-year-old, I've got a five-year-old, mm -hmm. and I've got peaches. 
So as well, I bought this amazing then three-year-old in July. And then a month later, then like, I'm not riding anymore. I don't even know if I want to ride anymore, but I can't sell these horses because they're going to end up with someone that does want to ride and does ignore their feelings and, you know, treads all over their mm. inherent horse spirituality that I just couldn't get away from. So I literally lit through 8,000 pounds down the drain on this very fancy, same father as Peaches and is cousin with my racehorse. Mm. So once I'd seen her pedigree, I was like, oh, that's it, she's coming home. It doesn't really matter. So she came from Ireland, unseen, herded in from a field, um, turned up uh, like a week later at mine. Uh, and then, yeah, a month later, I go, I don't want to ride anymore. I don't know what to enjoy this. Uh, so I think, wow, that's a very expensive pasture pet. Um, yeah, probably. So there was a lot of things going on in your mind and just yeah. like not really a whole lot happening on the other side, right? No, exactly. I um, There was so much guilt, frustration. But why I wasn't getting better? Why didn't I want this? You know, I get, I wake up in the morning and be like, I want to want this. Mm. How do I make myself want this? You know, and I do like three days of radical self-acceptance. I do three <laughs> days of yoga this do that and I do it like really like this is what I'm doing for three days and then I talk myself out of it and be like you're such a quitter you're such a failure you've just like got no determination no motivation anymore mm. and all the while like looking after these other people's horses I've now got 12 horses on site so like it's not quite a full-time job because they all live out in fields but it is enough um yeah. plus there's a big farm to look after and the, that like everything else never get shorter it only gets longer of things that I need to do um doing the confident equestrian program really gave me the permission to take my time and accept that things happen for me mm. on an exceptionally slow basis and that I is think okay. That's most like a lot of the time, people, it, that's normal. <laughs> it's not just mm. me. <laughs> but I think when I've been like, I want a horse, mm. oh, I see gotcha. a horse, yeah. I buy a horse, you know, I wanted, mm -hmm. I wanted, there's so much in my life that I've been like so lucky and incredible yeah. at manifesting these things where I'm like, mm -hmm. want it see it get yep, it gotcha. that is the sort of person that I am you know and like when I was at school like everything came super easy to me I was mm. so naughty but I work I just read it in a textbook oh, I've learned it great I kind of I didn't excel academically but I was average to good yeah the same with sport I was like I really like sport it's very very easy for me to put 110 percent effort into like all of the stuff I really like drama I got all the good parts in the film. yeah and same with like was, your whole like career is a groom kind of thing you absolutely like, you know, like I want to groom at badminton okay I never made it to badminton easily could have done yeah um so you know I was like right gotcha. I want this job I get this job I think I've faced mm. everything had just come even if at the time it didn't particularly feel easy suddenly mm. I was at this like stood on the edge mm. of this like big chasm. I'm like, I really, 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 really need to get to the other side, get in, like canoe down the river, down the bottom, like whatever it is, but I'm stuck here. And I don't know what to do to mm. take me to the next level so that I actually feel yeah. like I want to work with my horses. Yeah. And again, I really thought, can we do Compton Equestrian Program, like week one, wow. Done. Let's go. <laughs> I'm working with my horses. I'm really good at it. Of course I, I am. That. Like my horses yeah. are just I'm working at liberty. I'm mm -hmm. I'm quite competitive with myself. Yep. So like I also wanted to be like, you know, the first person to do a liberty circle with my horses. I wanted to be the first person, like I really wanted to get on my two young horses mm. during mm. the program. Mm. And I just went slower and slower. And at the beginning, I would 
really try and tune in to how I felt about certain situations while working with my horses. Um, so quite often I would ask them one or two questions and if they gave me a really, really good answer, it doesn't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. That's another thing I've had to really step away from. Mm -hmm. It's more the effort mm -hmm. and the idea that they've given me an answer. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be right. Ideally, it's not completely wrong. Otherwise, I would ask again. Mm -hmm. um, asking it from a place of you do what you do. This is the question I'm asking. Not like you have to do it. Not like I've got these grand ideas that you're going to do the perfect hindquarter yield or shoulder yield or like head down or whatever it is. Like I need to be able to accept that 0.1% of effort mm. and be okay with walking away from that. Mm. So again, that was very, very confronting because I am used to seeing progress. Yeah. I want to get the young horse. I knew I didn't want to break my young horses in this way, but I knew that this was the way that I'd done it before, which is, you know, lunge them with tack on, probably stick side reins on them so they look real fancy and it's much more difficult for them to bark. Um, when they're hot and puffy, sit on them. Yeah. Then have somebody eat me around. Then somebody put me on the lunge and have a little trot on them. And then have somebody lead me down the road. Oh, wow, my horse is broken and fantastic. Well done, Sophie. You are an incredible horseman. And I really, I knew I didn't want to do that. But that is the sort of progress that I thought yeah. I would be making. And I thought I'd get onto another program and I'd be like, okay, so this is going to literally like spoon feed me. That is what I want. I need everything to be really, really broken down. Mm. And I thought like within two weeks, I'd be completely different and so would so would my horses and actually knowing that all of us in the group had to slow down mm. had to really really put things under a microscope which is really confronting because I'm used to looking at this like great big picture and being like okay well the amazing result is what I'm looking for the other stuff just falls by the side and actually what I'm now looking for is I'm really really zoomed in and I'm like I would need to be aware of what her ears doing, mm. what her tail's doing, what her back's doing, how her legs are moving. Mm. And of course, at the beginning, that takes a huge amount of like, I'm trying not to stare at you. But I'm really, really <laughs> staring at you. But don't be intimidated by me staring at you. But I just want to know how you're feeling about me asking this tiny question yeah. and not getting frustrated and being prepared to stay with questions without getting frustrated. Mm. And if I ever felt frustrated, I just take the head collar off and walk away. Yeah. So I'm sure I was incredibly slow because so much of the time I'd get triggered by their reaction of, or their lack of reaction or their overreaction and just be like, I have to leave right now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I want to say about four weeks in, I... And we probably would have done three of our mindset one-on-ones at this point. Yeah. How did you feel through that process as well? Oh, it was incredible. And it's given me so much like permission and opportunity to really sink into the woo and the wonderful, which is stuff that I really, really wanted to buy into. It felt very right for me. But I felt quite alone and I didn't feel brave enough to speak about it to other people. And now I'm sure some people think I'm mad. And I <laughs> fully embrace that and I fully encourage that. And I, it's not necessarily that I want to trigger people at all no, because okay. I don't really want anybody to feel uncomfortable, but I want people to question why they're saying the way, the things that they're saying. Yeah. You know, like I now know that in environments that don't necessarily suit me, like I don't like busy environments because it's okay. I don't like busy environments because I get overwhelmed by the amount of people and energy and information and stuff going on and I take it all on board and I used to really beat myself up about feeling exhausted and lazy and 
wanting to lie on the sofa and eat junk food and just numb myself. Mm. And it's still massively a work in progress, but I'm now so aware of like all these things and how beautiful it is to be in tune with that and to feel that and to help other people and my horses Mm. and my dogs and my partner to question stuff with them and help them feel okay with them and go on that journey together and not be like, we all need to be perfect human beings. The day we decide we're going to be like this, we have to be like this. And if not, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Knowing that I'm never going to be like the hundred percent version of myself because Mm -hmm. when I get to that hundred percent version that myself today believes that I could be, that version of Sophie is going to be like, I could do this better. That could be better. I could feel this. Sure. I can do that. That would have really scared me and frustrated me. And I probably would have been like, I don't ever want to get to that level because I don't want to have to up level again. And I think doing your mindset allowed me to really sink into that. Like this is going to be a day by day, minute by minute work in progress. Mm-hmm. You are never going to do everything the way that you might right now think is right, but it is the right thing for you. Mm. And I have gone from really wanting to believe in certain things, wanting to feel that way and not actually feeling that way. But like, you know, I could say I felt that way. I really wanted to, to now like really embodying it and knowing that it doesn't make any sense to anybody else, but it sits right with me. And I'm 100% okay with that. Whereas I was, I think I was desperate to fit in. I was desperate to feel okay about things. I was desperate to just be normal. And now I'm like, I, we're none of us are normal. We're all on a sliding scale of usness. (laughs) And we, every day, every minute is an opportunity to, to learn and to go yeah on basically not backwards not sideways like everything is a progression on even if at the time it feels like you've taken 50 steps backwards Mm. everything will be better for it but it's like that not knowing not being able to see the end that I've had to really just it's a huge lesson in acceptance I think totally in general and there's so much conditioning around that through everything that you've been doing for years and years and years like always chasing the next thing going to the next competition achieving the next thing doing the next thing um and so many people live that way and i really feel like the confident equestrian program alongside the mindset work alongside like you learning a bit more about your human design and things like that it really just gives you i really think it's just the permission to be you and just to take it as it comes and just like to give like you were saying, everyone around you, including your animals, the same permission slip because it's just like we are doing the best we can with the knowledge we have. Okay, let's take it as it comes. And I really feel like initially when you started the program, it was mainly just about you getting the confidence up to go out and spend time with your horses and know that you didn't have to take their behavior personally. Like you could just do a little bit and they're going to be okay and you're going to be okay. And you're going to work through it, you know, um, and just building your confidence up through that process. Um, and before you were alluding to talking about sort of four weeks in on the program, do you remember what you, what you were going to say? I can't remember. I think it was that it really started to settle that actually what I am doing is okay. Yeah. Taking these tiny, weeny 30 seconds, two minute training sessions with my horses in their herd of seven, it's okay. Yeah. And once I swallowed that and let it settle and been okay with it, suddenly instead of, you know, doing the horses two or three days a week, I was doing them four days a week, Mm. five days a week. I was coming back inside and thinking, Hmm. how can I do that better like what did I miss but not in a yeah oh you missed it you not in a judge like ruined everything it was like that was really interesting when I asked Mm. Boo to do this she actually brought her head towards me and felt like she was gonna nip me Mm. you know was that 
because she wants to engage. She's a young horse and, you know, I'm touching her in places that like do make her feel things. Did she just want to say, hey, that's too much? Or was she going, oh, you're trying to play with me? Or, you know, what did I miss? What didn't I miss? What can I do better? If, if she just went to bite me, that's also okay. That's just feedback for me. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I can do with it what I want to do with it. And I do not want to ignore it. But I also don't want to focus my whole session on the fact that out of five minutes of really good work, mm-hmm. two seconds of that, I triggered her. Yeah. Because really, the other however many seconds, what is it, would have been like 298 seconds, she was absolutely fine, untriggered, relaxed, happy. So we need to put the energy and the focus into that and not into the two seconds that, you know, maybe I did push her in the wrong point. Maybe she's coming into season and she's like, whoa, that's too much. Or like, oh, hello. I don't know. And I also don't need to know. Exactly. Of course. If it becomes this pattern of like repeated behavior, every time I go up to her, she tries to bite my head off. Mm. Of course, we will go and investigate and do what we need to do. But also not every little thing means I'm A, doing it wrong, B, means my horses hate me, Mm -hmm. or C, means that I'm useless, I'm rubbish, and I should never pick up a head collar ever again. Because that's where I was. I was just so lost and confused and frustrated and disappointed in myself. Mm -hmm. Over those four weeks of, you know, forcing myself to do it, wondering if it's ever going to change or am I just going to do this 12 weeks and then like you know who knows where Sophie will be at that point Mm -hmm. um suddenly think we're like looking back and being like actually this week has been a bit easier because we had the cool Mm -hmm. because I had to actually think about what I was doing Mm -hmm. listen to everybody else genuinely feel excited for them Mm -hmm. And then have that feeling like mirrored right back to me when I'm saying like, oh, Peaches didn't pin her ears when I put her head collar on today. She stopped having snarly nostrils when I walk alongside her. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and of course my horses, because they live in this equicentral system, uh, and that's quite close to my house, and probably when I go out, it's morning in the UK when we're recording this, and probably when I go out in the morning, there'll be two or three of them lying down in the sand now this didn't used to happen I never used to see them lying down now I can go and lie with them Mm. and I'm certain that the equicentral has been transformational for them Mm. I am certain that you know I always wanted them to have access to forage but it was basically like you're either shut in the field with grass or you're shut in your stable with hay they never went without but there wasn't a choice. Now they have a choice that every single day they can choose to be out in the field and they're close enough, the field and and their little home pen. Mm. They can see each other. So quite often the herd will be a bit split up. Mm. I am certain that has transformed the way that they feel because it's made me see what horses they want to do. So I have been so like, I'm not doing anything. Mm in my day-to-day management of you that triggers you in the slightest. So I can go out there and go and spend time with them. And this is nice. Whereas when I was spending time with them in the stables, I was feeling guilty because they were in a stable. When I was spending time with them in a field, I was feeling guilty because, oh, I don't like that there's not enough grass. Oh, there's not the right sort of grass. Mm. Oh, there's this. Oh, there's that. You know, it's a bit muddy, it's a bit dry, there are too many flies, there is too much rain. Whereas now, and this is a very me thing, because I want to look after them in the way that I want to look after them. Yeah. Suddenly the the freedom to watch them do as they please meant that I could go out there and be like, this is amazing. And I could really just sink into that with them and enjoy spending time with them in the space that they want to be in, not where I'm telling them to be or putting them in. Totally. and yeah, after after four weeks, I started thinking, oh, this is this is all right. I can do this. And we started doing the uh, desensitizing work. 
Mm. And I was like, I can do this. Because when you're asking them to physically move at the beginning, I was feeling like, this is all right. I don't really know if there's proof that it's working. Because even when I video it, you know, all I do is like focus on how I look and not necessarily, I can be like, oh, look, they're relaxed. But I'm just putting that down to the fact that they're working in an environment that keeps them safe and I'm not doing anything that upsets them. And, you know, my sessions are 30 seconds long. Like they don't have an opportunity to get to a mm. trigger because I just leave the second I'm worried I might cross that boundary. But certainly with desensitizing, even if my sessions were a minute or two long, I'd still be making them feel things that I was uncomfortable about making them feel and then helping them through it. Yeah. And for Peaches, that was just amazing. Because at the beginning, she was so shut down. She was like, I'm not interested. You wave that bag around. You clap your but uh, your um, bottle full of stones, you like put the bag stick on me, do what you want, human. And at some point you're going to leave me alone again. And not getting frustrated with her, not upping the pressure so that it actually scared her, waiting until I literally got a, you know, side eye or an ear flick and then held it there until she took half a breath. And then I'd leave her. You know, at the beginning, it might have taken me five minutes to get to that point of her, like, actually really getting a bit like, oh, what is she doing? I'm not sure I'm okay with that. Whereas most of the time, it was like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, fine, fine. Pretty human. Working through that with Peaches together without me getting frustrated, Mm -hmm. because to me, it was like a puzzle. Mm. And I think for so long, I hadn't been able to be you know intuitive or creative with my training with peaches because I was so like this is how I have to be with her I have to accept she does this I don't like it when she does that she doesn't like it when I do that but anyway we just make it work the way we make it work and suddenly I was going oh she's okay with this is she okay with that no she's not okay with the flag back here fantastic let's just stay here and wait until she softens and relaxes and breathes into it. And then I'd relax with her. And it was just an amazing process for Peaches and I to go through together where I was focused on movement away from her. So I wasn't touching her, which she doesn't like. Mm-hmm. I wasn't close to her. So I wasn't worried that I was going to get bitten or like stomped on or anything. And I could just watch her in a really soft way. Mm-hmm. And because I think I was doing something myself that kept me busy from wanting her to do something totally um and that was something that I'd never even considered about desensitizing was like this whole like somatic movement for me that I was like trying to tune into how I was feeling a release and then really feeling that release yeah and peach she just I don't even want to say she turned a corner like she flipped 360 fan 180 like she just changed because I changed because I was going like we're doing this together you were noticing and like the way you were doing it was completely different to the past like you had the curiosity you were holding space for her you're holding space for yourself and yeah it changes everything mm. and um through through the time that I was doing CEP I uh the I got a lady out to massage my horses and, you know, having spent, I don't know how many hours on Google trying to find somebody that can hold my hand, be a mentor, like come and watch me work my horses regularly over here. I am still a little bit indoctrinated. I love having lessons. I want to be on a program and I'm not, I knew after CP, I probably struggle with my motivation because I wouldn't have the weekly commitment oh. to having a catch up call and having Felicity like there at my fingertips being like, help, tell me I'm doing the right thing. And everybody else holding that amazing supportive space. I knew for me to enjoy working with my horses the most, I 
need to have somebody that holds me accountable regularly. And I really wanted somebody to work through things with me at home so they could watch me and and help me. And I had my two young horses to break in. And I was like, I definitely need somebody on the ground just to be like, don't swing your leg over, Sophie. Don't do it right now. Um, Or like, yes, well done. You made the right decision, Sophie. Everything's fine. Um, And yeah, this amazing lady came out and massaged my horses. And she said, oh, well, my partner helped behavioral problems. He loves Warwick Schiller. He's done work with um, reward-based training. He's done this. He's done that. He worked in racing. And I thought, this is, he's me. He's the racing version of me. He just started his horsemanship journey six years ago. Mm -hmm. And also never, because he was working with racehorses and they are very horsemanshipy base resources. Yes, they're probably kept in a way that doesn't yeah. particularly suit the species of a horse, but you can't make these thoroughbreds do stuff. Like I discovered with my thoroughbred, mm. you have to find ways, and like you discovered yeah. with Bruce and Shorty, like there are ways that you can ask these horses, but at the end of the day, if you don't have them on side and you don't have them mm. deciding, yes, this is the best idea, mm it's never going to be as good as it could be or feel as good as it could be. And I think because these racehorses are worth so much money and can earn so much money Mm. on the successful yards, you probably have these incredible horsemen who Mm. maybe haven't had a lesson in their life, but they've learned from Mm. the old yard manager and the old yard manager before then. Mm. And so there's not this kick them, force them, English riding way of like bigger bit, bigger spurs, because that doesn't happen in racing. So, mm, mm. no, I mean, I mean, they don't, they don't does, ride with spurs. I think it depends on the place. <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. <laughs> and absolutely, I'm not saying that I would yeah. want to be a racehorse in the slightest, but equally, like these horses wouldn't run their guts out. I'm talking more jump horses as well, like year yeah, after I get year. What you, I, get what you, I get where you're going with this. You've got to be like smarter about the way that you do things, yeah. Absolutely. You can't just crack them on the arse and go like, no, you're going to jump that fence. They've got to want to jump that fence to come home in front of all the other horses. Mm-hmm. Racing is a bit of a messed up industry. I get that. But the environment that this guy has worked in, he has had to teach horses how to use the stalls to start. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He has not been in a position to be like, shut up, get in the stalls. I don't care about the temper tantrums you do because then they are banned from racing. Yeah. So you can't just... you got to be maybe you can, about everything, yeah. Absolutely. And I think as well, flooding them through it doesn't necessarily work because then they have got to run like their lives depend on it. Mm. So if they're shut down in there and they're not really reacting to what's going on around them, the gate opens, if they miss their start by half a second, they probably lost the race. Yeah. So anyway, this guy has been through racing, has bit the same that I found with competition work, got very disenchanted with it, got very burnt out, got very frustrated with the industry as a whole, left, had some time away, and has now started doing private horses. Mm -hmm. And Jess, who was massaging my horse, said, oh, you should get in touch with him. He sounds like you two would get along. And I thought, oh, I'm in the middle of the Confident Equestrian Program. I'm not particularly sure that I want to get anybody else involved. But I think I trust myself enough. Like, yeah. also, what if he makes me do stuff I'm not comfortable with? No, I think I'm okay saying that's enough. Thanks, but no thanks. So I think as well, Confident Equestrian Program gave me, well, the confidence to trust that what I know I'm doing is totally right. Mm. And I can invite other people on board. Yeah. And I'm okay with saying like, hi, I'll pay you for your time, but actually this isn't going to work. Yeah. Um, whereas I've always felt a little bit in a trainer's hand mm. uh, and a little bit disrespectful if you don't do what you're told to do. Yeah. So anyway, this, this guy comes along and he watched me work with my horses and I think perhaps it was the second week he came, he said that like the biggest compliment I think I've received this whole time was that my horses 
are really good at being horses. And I thought, like, that's it. I've hit the jackpot. That's all I want. Mm. Um, that's incredible. And to have that external validation that yeah. I had, he could recognize what I was trying to do. Mm. And suddenly I realized, oh my God, my horses are so much further on than I perceive them to be. Because Absolutely. every day you're like, I liken it to trying to make a sandcastle out of individual bits of yeah. sand. When you look at it every single day, if all you do is move 100 bits of sand from one bucket to where you're making the sandcastle, 100 pieces of sand looks like nothing. And over the period of when you're looking at it every day, it looks exactly the same. After a month, that's a lot of pieces of sand. After what? two months, that's doubled. And after six months, like suddenly you've got a sandcastle. Yep. But when you're looking at it every day, you don't see it. Yeah. Um, so that was amazing. And that gave me a huge confidence boost um, that I was doing the right thing. And yes, you know, I still at this point hadn't sat on peaches. I haven't tacked up my young horses. You know, there's been no lunging. There's been no long reining. I'm thinking, how am I going to get these horses to the point that I can sit on them? Mm. Um, you know, Confident Equestrian Program has provided me the ground work and the foundation that I've got very, very relaxed, understanding, curious horses. Mm. But they haven't, it hasn't put a saddle on my horse's back because that's me. And suddenly I was like, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to teach my horses myself. No one's going to come and talk me through this process. But because of the desensitizing Mm. module I was like this is easy yeah it's it's all just, the same. instead of using a bag stick or a rattly bottle here's a saddle here's a bridle here we go guys um so peaches having wanted to rip my head off you know and she's had all the ulcer treatments she's had hormone yeah. treatments she's on everything to stop her tummy from hurting you know all sorts Yep. And I, yeah, she used to have to be tied up. And no matter what I did, even if she had a bucket of food on the floor while she was tied up, she'd still stop at the moment of the saddle going on. She'd stop at the moment the girth touched the tummy the first time and she'd stop every time it was done up and she'd pull a nasty face or she'd try and bite me or she might even lift a back leg or swish her tail or like push towards me. Now I can tack her up at liberty. Well, she's shut in an arena. Yeah. She shouldn't go anywhere. And if she does go anywhere, I go, oh, that's fine. Don't worry about it. And I thought it was a really nice moment in our last coaching call. You were like reflecting on the past 12 weeks and you were just like, she hasn't put her ears back at you. Yeah, she really hasn't. Which is like huge massive and you know what there it's like she did put her ears back when I asked her I I put she's been having a bit more pressure put on her to actually give in her rib cage at the moment but I mean it's like whenever you go through something especially if you've done something that you haven't particularly liked in the past and it hasn't been fun for you Whenever you go through the process of helping a horse or helping a person or helping you, like it feel good again, like there's going to be that discomfort of you realizing, oh, it's not the same anymore, you know? Yeah. And instead of me being like, oh my God, she pinned her ear, she swished her tail, like, oh, without even being triggered in the moment, I just gently held the back of my hand against where her girth sits or where my leg should be gently asked her to give through her rib cage as she's walking around the side of the school as soon as she micro flex I let go of everything yeah she had about 20 huge yawns I, I took her, took her off and I walked her back to the gate totally at liberty she followed me you know yeah, you're I then, just building that relationship where she's like holy shit someone's finally like listening to me but and it's I'm not I'm now, I've like leapfrogged or gone through that process of being like, oh my God, she was mean to me. I have to hide to like, 
oh, I ruined it all. I asked for one too many things. I probably set our journey back six months. I uh, probably shouldn't work with us for next week. Like, oh, this is awful. I don't even want to touch her anymore. To like, that's okay. I yeah. know you're uncomfortable. I love you through your uncomfortableness. Mm -hmm. You are okay. Like, this is going to be fine. And the second, I'm now in tune enough with her to hopefully notice the tiny millimeters of her like giving a little bit to be like yeah. you did it sweetheart and I'm okay enough with being like even though she might have been triggered and she might have done things that I didn't want her to do and the answer to the question was minute especially compared to the reaction she gave me beforehand I am comfortable enough to know that the next time I go and put head on her mm. she's going to remember the feeling that I left her with and I'm not going to have to redo this exercise 20 times until she does it perfectly three times back to back. Yeah. That has been just groundbreaking because, you know, I, in my lessons, I get told repeatedly back in the day, do it once more to prove it wasn't fluke. Yeah. It always goes wrong. It always was never as good as the fluke one because then you're trying too hard and you can't really think what you did the time before and you try and force things and yeah but now, I remember even you saying like you would work with them do a really short session finish on a good note and then it was like they'd train themselves and they'd like yeah rest a few steps overnight the next time you work with them <laughs> honestly it's extraordinary so I haven't worked I've given myself a rule that I don't work them on the weekend uh so Monday morning now when I go out I am certain they will all be better than they were on Friday yeah. And I haven't done anything with them. Yeah. And it's not like they had groundbreaking sessions on Friday either. But I know that there, there will be tiny, tiny, tiny improvements that over the period of a week or a month add up to huge improvements. Um, and okay. I just have to be really, really comfortable with the fact that it takes, it takes what it takes. Some weeks we might have gigantic improvements. And some weeks it might not look like we've improved at all but I now know yeah that is how I get better like that okay. is and the story yeah. of humanity <laughs> it's exactly what was it like when you sat on her I thought it would be super dramatic and I'd probably yeah. burst into tears and I'd be overwhelmed with emotion and I got on and I just thought this is normal this is the next step I love it. There was no huge rush of anything. Mm. And part of me was like, oh, maybe I don't even want to ride anymore. <laughs> and I was just like, can the, can the unhelpful part of me sit in the back for a while yeah. and we can just enjoy where I've got to on Perfect. this journey? Because yeah. it was not a big deal. It but just, just that, that felt, fact alone is huge. Like, that's massive yeah. because you're just like so at peace with like whatever comes will come. I'm okay with where I am. She's okay with where she is. Like we're just taking each day as it comes and I'm not taking any of it personally. None of it, it like impacts my self-worth. I'm just doing mm -hmm. what I feel like doing. Yeah. And I'm also, I am genuinely 100% comfortable. If I go out there today, do her groundwork and go to put her saddle on and she goes, nah. okay, fine. That's all right. Yeah. It it's not to do with me. It, she might want the saddle on tomorrow. She might not. And I might have to work through it again. But I am so comfortable with just having my own plan, talking to the horses about it. And they go like, yeah, this is great. Mm. Most, of the, most of the time, the youngsters are really, really up for anything I suggest mm. because they haven't had a bad day in their lives. Whereas Peaches has been ignored and Totally. You know, had her um, opinion stomped on mm. repeatedly in the 12 years that she's been a horse. And I'm totally okay with that. It might, you know, she might, we might take it up a couple of levels over the next few weeks and start doing some, you know, trotting and some more lateral stuff. And she just goes, now, nah, this is not all right for that. Absolutely fine. Totally. It doesn't matter to me at all. My motivation is to have a happy horse. Yeah, she can be a happy horse that does groundwork. She can be a happy horse that gets 
ridden every day, she can be a happy horse that goes competing. I, or she can be a happy horse that does nothing. Yeah, totally. Because now, and I think the complete release of any outcomes with her is going to allow us to do more than I ever imagined possible. Totally. Because I just don't care. I just want her to be happy and I want it to feel right for me. And I know it is going to be crazy slow. And that's fine. But it's like one of those things where it feels, like you said before, it feels crazy slow, but then you look, you'll look back in a year's time and be like, oh my goodness. Like that was actually like, we did a lot or there were so many shifts that happened amongst it. Like even as you're describing what, like the journey that you had through CEP, like 12 weeks where like on paper, it doesn't really look like a whole lot happened. But a whole lot happened. Like Mm. so much was happening underneath the surface for you and the horses and just you like, I feel like that setting that foundation, that emotional foundation for both of you, that sometimes does take time, right? Um, But then once that's set, then things can flow uh, like on top of that and it all just comes together so much better and you've got more emotional resilience and you've got the ability to regulate and all of those things. Um, And then you can that growth can start to build on top of that on this steady base that isn't like, oh my goodness, my ears, my horse put their ears back at me. Uh, the world is ending. You know what I mean? <laughs> like- Absolutely. And, you know, like the emotional regulation and the acceptance and the being present, like every single day, mm. it is a work in progress. I think that's what I, yeah. 12 weeks ago, I thought that I would do one thing and I would be this like accepting present you'd be ascended regulated your highest self being done yeah and th- and that would be it and you know I just like tick that box great what's next yeah um and actually now I really love like some days it does feel like a bit of an uphill battle but that constant repetition of like being kind to myself, being kind to myself in relation to my horses, because I know I'm always going to put their best interests first. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that I don't particularly have to worry about. But when I feel like, mm, I don't really want to do X, Y, Z with my horses today. Okay, that's fine. And you don't need to know why you don't want to yeah. do X, Y, Z with your horses today. Just go and have a scratch with them. And it normally ends up that I put a head collar on them anyway. And before I know it, I've done some training. Yeah. But instead of that mentality of being like, you have to do X, Y, Z. And if you don't do X, Y, Z, it means that you are this. Yeah. And having to know the answers and having to know that at the end of the 12 hours of my day, this is this. And I want to grid it all and put it in these perfect little boxes and understand everything and know everything. That total letting go and acceptance of like, I don't know all the answers. I'm never going to know all the answers. What's the point of knowing all the answers? Just yeah, try your best. And every day my best is going to look slightly different. And it's just that pure acceptance that I it's not that. easy. But <laughs> every day I'm just like, the fact that it's not easy is an opportunity for you to accept where you're at. Oh, and yeah. And if it was easy, you'd be finding something to make it harder because you're a growth person, you know what I mean? Like it's all about the journey. It's not about the destination. Yeah. And like, you know, when I was busy competing, like it's not like I just sailed through. I worked really hard at everything and I picked everything apart. I was that really annoying person. I would have the most incredible lesson. Someone would have come and filmed it and then I would beat myself up how awful everything looked on video I didn't think I looked like that like oh I caught her in the mouth there oh I was in front of the movement there like oh I cut that corner my legs bad this 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 so Hmm. now what my real focus is is not what I look like Hmm. it's what I feel like in the moment Hmm. and what my horse feels like I love it. And now when I watch videos, I'm not like, oh, my God, is that what my bum looks like in my saddle? Or like, oh, I can't believe I chose to wear that T-shirt today. It's like, 
I've got such a nice smile on my face. Or like, yeah. look how serene my horse looks. Or even little things like, oh, a bird just flew across the arena. Whereas I never would have noticed that stuff. I was always yeah. so focused on what I look like mm. and whether or not I could put it on Instagram. And now I'm just like, what does it feel like? I and just it. diving into that. That's um, huge because that's life changing. Yeah. You can carry that into yeah. all areas of your life, and it's just, it's really, it's awesome. And what are your? Do you have any like specific goals with your horses moving forwards? Like where where would you like like to head? Or I know you're going to keep it open, but yeah, is there anything you want to share with people about what where, where you kind of your vision is? Or oh, I've oh, I've got a lot of vision. <laughs> um. Something that I really, really, really want to do, and I don't really care how long it takes or how I get there, I want to go back to competing, Mm -hmm. and I want to do it in this horsemanship. I want to get back to competing, and I want to do it in this horsemanship, understanding, emotional horsemanship, cooperation Mm. with my horses. Yeah. Where I can also do it, not from a preachy point with other people, but I would love to be able to show people that it can be done differently and you don't you don't have to do a me. Yeah. And stop riding for 10 months. Yeah. There are easy little things you can do every single day with your horses yeah that's going to change your life and change their life and change every other horse that you totally interact with that that would be an incredible goal for me and if if I can get peaches to go and do a BE80 so 80 centimeter horse trials and she does it with a smile on her face you know that that would blow me away Mm. If she just goes for a hack and doesn't try and run over a bin because I ask her to wait while a lorry goes past, that would also be a dream come true. Totally. So it's more it's a feeling. The possibilities and just, yeah, there's so much potential there, but you don't need any of it to happen. But the, the seed's planted and you're just going to see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. And if, if I never want to leave the arena with her again because actually she finds totally. hacking so overwhelming and I can't get her yeah. to regulate herself that's fine we can do bareback bridleless stuff I trust her so much that like yeah. taking off her saddle and a bridle doesn't particularly like save me I just want to do what's right for her and not shock her yeah. and um, if you want to do the eventing thing you can I'm sure there'll be a horse out there that would love to do that if you don't already have them and mm. you'll be able to do that like I think there's very like there's horses that are going to suit different disciplines. There's horses that are going to love being ridden. There's horses that hate being ridden. There's horses that love jumping. There's horses that hate jumping. There's horses that love dressage. There's horses that hate dressage. Like there, there's a horse for, for that thing that you want to do. And I think it's just, it's, yeah, I'm excited to see how it all unfolds. Yeah. I mean, I, I know at the bottom of my soul, heart, whatever it is, that like the two, my two youngsters will do it. But yeah. I, it would mean more to me to do it with Peaches because we'll have gone through it together. Whereas my youngsters, yeah. they don't really know me and the life that yeah. Peaches has done and been through. Um, so like, I know my youngsters will just make it, not necessarily seem like a complete breeze, but mm. Peaches will make me work for it. But I know that that's what will make it amazing. Whereas the youngsters will be amazing in their own ways. But I think I'll always have in the back of my head, like, yeah, but they started off on the right foot. Uh, and I'm sure it'll make them easier, like more confident, betterly, better emotionally regulated horses. But if I can help peaches come through that, like that would just be unreal. And I, and I, then I want to show other people that it's possible. Totally, totally. No, I think it's really, really exciting. And yeah, we'll just see what happens and be open, hold the vision and just take it day by day and, and see how it all comes together. Um, what advice would you give to your younger self? I would just say keep going and stick with what you believe in and never let 
anybody make you feel like you're wrong, but at the same time, be prepared to question everything you know. Totally. I love that. And what is your equestrian perspective or a message that you'd like to share? Listen to how it feels within yourself. Even if you can't feel anything, that's something. Mm -hmm. I love it. And lastly, what would you say to someone that was considering joining the Confident Equestrian Program? And we'll talk to it, like, because you did the group version. You did the group with some added one-on-ones, so coming at it from that point because I've got the other option there as well. But, um, yeah, from that point, what what were you going to say? Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Do it. I mean, really, you have nothing to lose Mm -hmm. and everything to gain. I love that. Um, I've I've never been someone to sit on the sidelines for too long. Uh, I've always wanted just to dive in. Um, but for anybody that's wondering, like, is it is it worth the investment? Can I make it work? You know, there are a lot of things that you can go without for three months mm. in order to pay for or to have the time for CEP, like. I would say like you would just you won't want to take lessons you won't want to compete because there are so many things to take on board and to learn and to let settle yeah it and is I mean just, if there's is, someone it who, worth it in Buffalo yeah and if there's people who want to compete and do that at the same time as well you can do it it's just everyone has their own different experience and I think that's what's cool about the group because you can see how everyone's navigating their experience so differently um, and mm. moving throughout each thing each um, moving through each week at their own pace and I think it's really really cool to see um, but yeah I yeah I just look at the return on investment in terms of like even just like our conversation today like you were literally in a place where it's just like all of your motivation completely gone like have all like have these amazing horses have this beautiful property but like what's wrong with me to now like in this very optimistic place where you're feeling really good with how the horses are going and you're just not taking things personally and uh, I just uh, it's the best yeah it's, it's absolutely incredible and yeah CEP has been like fundamental in helping me like just change the way that I look at everything I could say all the right things whatever it would be like 14 weeks ago before I started CEP uh but now I feel them and I know them and there are so many other amazing little discoveries that I'm probably not even aware that I've made but they're just there and they're kind of keeping me keeping me going which is just incredible so thank you very much for uh for putting so much time and effort into creating such an incredible program oh I love it and I love working with people exactly like you and just everyone that comes through this program is just incredible and just so aligned and so amazing. And it's just cool to just see all of these beautiful transformations unfold and just continue to follow your journey. So it's really, really exciting. Um, I pulled two cards for you. So we got, you are brave, which I think you totally are brave. Like just through, li- through listening to your whole journey, like you've continually had this resilience about yourself. You're like, I'm doing what I want to do. I'm not stopping. And even if there's been uncomfortable moments, you've always been like, no, nope, I'm doing this thing. And even diving on this horsemanship journey, like it's not for the faint hearted hearted because you have to face a lot of the things that you've done in the past. Right. Um, but mm-hmm. it's really, really cool. And then the other card, I want to put one more because I feel like we need a follow up, a follow on card for this one. Um, ooh. Okay, so we've got uh, let go. So if there's anything else you need to just let go of, <laughs> it's safe. And all this stuff. <laughs> and then you've got you can do it. You know, like yeah. keep one one foot in front of the other. You can always reflect back and just see how all of it's come together. But yeah, I really appreciate you chatting with me today and sharing your story. And I think it's going to be really inspiring for either someone who is feeling a little bit lost or hopeless or just wanting to know what's possible or for someone who's like been like through the sort of grooming world or competition world. And they're just sort of at that point where they're like, Oh, I want to learn more, like what's possible. Yeah. I just think it's, it's really cool. So thank you. Well, thank you for having me. It's, it's been lovely to speak about it all. And it just, yeah, it just makes you really reflect on the, Mm. how much has changed and, and also the amazing things that I've been lucky enough to do um, totally. it wasn't 
all it wasn't all amazing at the time but now when I look back on it it's just I wouldn't I wouldn't change it for the world yeah that's beautiful all right thank you thank you bye have a lovely day Well, I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of the Equestrian Perspective podcast. If you really enjoy it, please hit subscribe on the podcast so you can stay up to date with every episode that gets released. And also, if you want to share it around, please do so. Tag me on social media at Felicity Davies with an underscore at the end. And if you have any recommendations for episodes or guests that you would like me to interview on the podcast, please let me know via social media or if you have any questions at all, I'm happy to chat and I'm here for you whenever you need. So thank you for listening and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.